What's up my piano friends? Zach Evans here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you as quickly as possible how to read notes on the page using the pyramid system. Then we're gonna cover a simple three minute a day exercise to get these notes on autopilot. And finally, a complete six week note reading workout plan that'll take an absolute beginner and turn them into a sight reading beast. All right, I'm excited and ready to go. Let's get started. All right, so if we look at a piece of music, we have these two clefs. The treble clef here represents all of the high notes on the piano and usually is played with the right hand. The bass clef represents all the low notes on the piano and is usually played with the left hand. So let's take a look at the treble clef first. Now you notice there are five lines and four spaces and each of these represent an actual note on the keyboard. So this bottom line is the note E. Then the next space up is F. Then the next line, G, the next space, A, and then B, C, D, E, F, up the keyboard. Now you'll notice this makes logical sense, right? It's the exact same order as the alphabet from A up to the letter G, and then it restarts back with A. Now, to memorize these faster, we use an acronym. So for the lines, we use the acronym, every good boy does find. So every E, good G, boy B, does D and fine F. And for the spaces, you'll notice it spells out the word face. So we have F, A, C, and E. This way, if we see a note here, for example, we can just count up the lines and say, every good boy does, does is D, so here is the note. Same thing with spaces. If we look at this note, we just count F, A, C, E. Oh, okay, this is the note E. So by now you should be able to pick out every single note on the treble clef. And don't worry, I have a cheat sheet download for you later that'll have all these acronyms laid out nice and easy for you so you don't have to memorize them now. But first, let's move on to the bass clef. Now, just like the treble clef, you'll notice there's five lines and four spaces. But unfortunately, these lines and spaces do not line up the same way on the bass clef as they did the treble clef. So for example, in the treble clef, the bottom line is E. But in the bass clef, this bottom line is the note G. This is super annoying, and I wish the inventor of sheet music didn't make it like this, but that's how it is, so we have to learn it like this. But the good part is, just like the treble clef, the notes do go up in the order of the alphabet. So after this G, we restart at A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and back to A. So we have different acronyms for the bass clef as well. For the lines, we have great big dogs fight animals. So great G, big B, dogs D, fight F, animals A. And for the spaces, we have all cows eat grass. So all A, cows C, eat E, grass G. So for example, if we see this note, we just count up great big dogs fight fight, okay, this note is F. And if we see this note, we just say, okay, all cows eat grass. Grass is the note G. Now you're probably thinking, okay, Zach, but what about the black notes? But before we go into that, I don't want you to get overwhelmed, so I'd highly recommend you download a couple of cheat sheets now. They have the notes, the acronyms right there for you, plus a few things we're gonna use later on in this video. So click the link, put in your name and email, hit submit, and you'll go to the bonuses page. Then you can download the three cheat sheets here, and I'll see you back here in a sec. Next up, let's cover the sharps and flats to find the black keys on the piano. Now, a sharp symbol looks like this, and it just tells you, move up one note. So, for example, here's the note G. If you add a sharp symbol, this becomes the note G sharp. So, we find our G, we move up one note, and this is the note G sharp. Now, a flat symbol looks like this, and it's simply the opposite of a sharp. It tells you to move down one note. So, again, here's our G. And if we add the flat symbol, the note becomes G flat. So we move down one note, so here is our G flat. Now to remember this easily, you'll notice the sharp has these lines that are slanting slightly upward, so they tell you to move up a note. You can also remember that the sharpest kids move to the top of the class, so sharp equals up. 
Now, the flat symbol kind of looks like half of an arrow pointing downward, telling you to move down one note. Also, when a basketball becomes flat, it moves down, right? It deflates. So if we see this note, we simply use our acronym, every good boy does fine. So every good boy, boy is B. And then since there's a flat symbol, we go down one note. So the note is B flat. And if we see this note, we use the acronym FACE, so we come up F-A-C, here's our C, then we have this sharp symbol, it tells us to go up one note, so here's our C sharp. Alright, so now you should be able to name any note inside of the staff. But what about all these notes that are higher or lower than the staff? Well, that's where we use ledger lines. So for ledger lines, we're simply drawing more lines and spaces above or below the staff to extend it. It's as simple as that. So for example, we already know the top line of the treble clef is every good boy does fine. So F. So after F, the next space is simply a G. And then the next line is an A, and then B, and then C, and then so on. And the same thing going down. So the bottom line is the note E. And then if we go down in the alphabet, we just go D, and then C, and then B, and then A, and so on. And the exact same thing for the bass clef. So the top line is great big dogs fight animals, this A. And if we just continue up the alphabet, the next note is B, and then C, and D, and E, etc. And on the bottom, we have the note G, and then going down is F, E, D, C, etc. And we don't use an acronym for ledger lines, you simply count up or down from the top or bottom line to find them. And eventually you want to have these memorized. But by now you should be able to figure out any note on the staff, including sharps and flats. Alright, so next up we're going to cover a six week training plan to get you lightning fast at reading these notes so that it just goes on autopilot. Alright, so most videos out there just stop here and they go, you know, great, you know all the notes now. But the problem is, it's not enough to just know all these notes, you have to be able to know them fast so that when you're reading a piece of music you can see a note and instantly play it without thinking about it so these acronyms like every good boy does fine they're great for the beginner stage but at the end of the day you're not going to have time to go for every note you know every good boy does oh this is a d and you know the next note great big dogs fight okay it's an f you're going to have to straight up memorize these and know them at lightning speed to actually play songs in real time and we can do this using the pyramid system so go back to the cheat sheet page and make sure you download the pyramid system cheat sheet here and then open up the pyramid system exercise here. Now I already have both of these pulled up so the cheat sheet looks like this and the exercise is going to look like this. Now this exercise is a great way to quickly drill in note names and get a ton of reps in. And the nice part is you don't even need a piano. You could do this you know on the subway or while waiting in line or whatever. And all you do is it gives you a note and you simply click the correct answer. So for example this note is simply a C right this note is a B and you can use your cheat sheets and your acronyms you know this note is going to be an F sharp and if you get one wrong like this note is an A if you click a B it's gonna turn red and you simply click the correct answer after it and you can quickly go through like a hundred notes now this exercise seems simple but a big mistake beginners make is they just rush into it and start pounding through this exercise which is a really bad idea in the long run because the problem is you don't give your brain a chance to really grasp and automate one thing at a time and you end up learning all these notes kind of sloppily and never get them on the automatic level and this is where the pyramid method comes in so we're going to break this down break down reading notes into three variables the clef, accidentals, and range. And we're going to isolate and work on each of these separately so that when you build them back together, they build a rock solid foundation for reading notes. So as you can see in the cheat sheet for week one, this week right here, for clef, we are going to do bass and treble clef separately. We have accidentals, which are sharps and flats, off, and then we have a close range. So if we click the gear icon up here, for clef, we're going to do bass and treble separately. So let's just change that to treble clef. And then for accidentals, we're going to turn these off. And these are just sharps and flats. And then for the range, we're going to go to range right here. And notice it says close, which just means we're going to keep it within the staff like this. And now if we go back to our exercise, it's going to keep these notes within the range and it's not going to do any sharps and flats. So for example, here's F. 
Here's the note E. And again, use your cheat sheets and acronyms to find these notes and start to memorize them. And after you practice this for a few minutes, we're just gonna switch to the bass clef. So then go back to your settings, go to the bass clef, make sure that your accidentals are off. And then for the range, keep it to a close range. And it's gonna be the exact same thing now with the bass clef. And now you're just gonna run this exercise for a couple minutes. And so for week one, you're really gonna just solidify these notes in your brain so you don't get it confused with anything else. And every day, you wanna practice at least three minutes. And once you get your three minutes practice, you can cross off day one, that's this D1 uh, box up here for week one. And then the next day, you can practice another three minutes and cross off day number two. And then of course, day number three, day number four, and day number five. Once you have five days of practicing with these settings, then you can put an X in the done category, and now you're done with week one. And all of these basic notes will be solidified in your brain. Then we do the exact same thing for week two. But now for week two, you can see it's the exact same settings, except we're using the grand staff. So now we go up to settings, we change this to clefs and the grand staff, which is both treble and bass at the same time. We make sure accidentals are still off, just like it says in the sheet. And now range is close still, so we change our range to a close range like this. And now it's gonna give us an exercise with the whole grand staff. And again, you just practice this for, you know, three minutes per day. And on day one, once you do three minutes, you do the X and then same thing, day two, day three, day four, day five. Once you're done with week two, then you can hit this done category and cross this off. So you kind of get the point for week three, it's gonna be the same thing. You know, we're gonna change the settings to bass and treble separately again, but now we're gonna turn accidentals on so right we go back here we go back to our clefs and we're going to do them separate so let's just do treble clef turn accidentals on and the range is still a close range which you can see here is just fine and now we're going to do this exercise but it's going to give us sharps and flats as well which is going to make it a little bit harder and again we do our day one two three four five once we do five days we can put an x in the done category and by the end of week three this is when most students say that this stuff really starts to click and they can really feel like they can memorize notes and learn them and put them up a lot faster than they could before and then you get the picture week form same thing we have the grand staff accidentals on range close you do all your x's for week four and then same with week five and week six and once you've completed these six weeks these notes are going to be deep in your your brain and you can see how the pyramid method is a very gradual system of learning and even though it takes six weeks it's only three minutes per day but it's really going to help you develop a rock solid foundation for you to read notes automatically now one important rule to follow with this method the rule is you can only cross off one box per day no matter what so sometimes beginners think okay three minutes you know i'll just practice 30 minutes and cross off 10 boxes but that's not how it works because your brain learns and solidifies things when you sleep. So you need to drill this every single day. And don't get me wrong, you can absolutely practice more than three minutes per day, but even if you do, you can only cross off one box per day. One student had a great way of doing this. It was kind of funny, and, and maybe this is too much information, but he told me that he printed out these cheat sheets, he put them in his bathroom, and every time he was using the bathroom, he would just do three minutes of note reading and then cross it off. And it was a great way of saving time and really keeping him on track. And six weeks later, he was an absolute beast at his note memorization. So go get your cheat sheets now. Here's the link again. And also there's going to be another video down below all these cheat sheets right here. And it's gonna give you the best place to actually get music to sight read and a step-by-step -step process to actually reading a piece of music. And if you like this lesson where I go really in depth and give you practical training plans to follow, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. I'd hate for you to miss out on a future video that could really change the trajectory of your piano journey. All right, thanks a lot for watching. And as always, peace out and happy practicing.